lesson, uh, we are going to talk about how to create the check register that you uh, see here on the screen in Google Sheets. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about uh, to make it more convenient if you're wanting to see two files on the screen at the same time, uh, many of the assignments that I have, uh, there'll, there'll be a picture of the, the final result so you could have that on one side of the screen and then what you're working on on the other half. So that way you've got kind of a reference to look at. So first thing I'm going to do is going to create a new uh, spreadsheet. So I'm going to go to File, uh, New Spreadsheet. And when that, that window appears, I'm going to click on the tab and drag it off here so it creates a new window. So I can get this window here um, off to one side of the screen. And to make that happen, I use the Windows and a side arrow or Command side arrow. And so I hit the Windows side arrow and it splits it onto one half of the screen. And then I choose the other window that I have open that I want on the other half, which is this one here. And uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit on this so we can see a little easier. And so I now have a version of what I'm doing right here beside me. And uh, so it kind of gives me a little bit of a, a, a guide to go by. So here we go. Uh, your, your name, so Herring and check register goes into this first cell here. And then I'm going to hit enter to move down to my next cell. And then I'm going to type in check. And then in this particular sheet, I see the check and number on two lines in the same cell. To make that happen, after I type the word check, I hit the keys alt and enter. Alt enter moves me down to a new line within the same cell. And then I type my uh, number or hashtag symbol. And then I hit my tab key to move to my next cell. Uh, I'm going to type in this the word date. I'm going to use tab again to go to transaction description. I'm going to use tab again and type in this. Once again, it's a two line. So payment and then slash and then alt enter to get to my next line. And then I'm going to type the word debit in parentheses minus. And the reason we're doing that because a debit does exactly that. It subtracts um, whatever is in this column out of your checkbook or your savings account, whatever kind of register this is for. And I'm going to hit tab to my next cell, which is just simply going to be an X. I hit tab again. I'm going to call F here. And these are my deposits. Yay, deposits, because this adds money into my account. So deposits, and I hit Alt, Enter. And it's a deposit is also called a credit. So deposit slash credits. And in parentheses, we're going to put the plus sign because it does exactly that. That adds money into my account. The tab key, one more time. Uh, my starting balance is going to be $275 for this account. So that's what I'm going to put in that cell. And then up above here, we're going to um, hit uh, the up arrow and go to cell G1 and type in the word balance. Now, as I was uh, typing there, I was using the tab key, which probably wasn't the most important on that particular line, but um, uh, to describe why I was, was doing that and what the tab key does and the enter key together is if I'm doing a uh, spreadsheet. Let's go ahead and make this a bit bigger now. We'll go ahead and zoom in so we can see a little easier. If I'm putting together a, a spreadsheet here at name, let's see, let's do another column for age uh, and maybe another column for gender. Do not put this into your spreadsheet. I'm just doing this as an example. I use the tab key going across. Then when I hit enter, it goes ahead and moves me down to the beginning of the next line. So if I type in a name like Sam and age of 23 and my tab key again and the gender for Sam, uh, female, if I hit enter, once again, it moves me down to the, the beginning of the next line. Well, if I use the arrow keys this time, let's, let's do that for Pat. Uh, when I type in Pat and hit enter, uh, Pat is 65 years old. Pat is a male. And then uh, by hitting the enter key, well, when I hit enter now, it just moves me down to the next cell. So the, uh, the advantage of the tab key is I can enter in the names and the ages, 
keep hitting the tab key. And when I hit enter, it, it scrolls me or moves me right down to that next line right at the beginning. Uh, the arrow keys, I'd have to do a whole bunch of punching on arrows, especially if this was a long list of items I was entering in. So I don't need that. I'm going to go ahead and delete this off. That was just uh, for an example. Uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, uh, I want to, to create some headings that, that are eye appealing here. So I'm going to highlight my first row and make that 18 point font so it's a bit bigger. Uh, my next row is going to be 12 point font. Uh, in cells A1 through F1, we are going to merge those cells and we will also then center with uh, actually all these cells here. Why don't we just highlight A1 all the way through G2. All those need to be centered, so let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to also make them all bold so they stand out a little bit as headings. And the next thing I'd like to do is take a quick moment here and uh, do some resizing of the columns. So the check numbers are not going to be all that big, so we're going to resize that down a little bit smaller. Uh, same thing with the dates. We're going to use a small date format. We'll talk about how to do that in a minute. Uh, the transactions now, there's going to be some description of what the checks or the transactions were about. So we're going to click on this column heading and I'm going to double it to there and maybe double and a half even. Uh, make it a pretty big, pretty big width. Um, I don't know, the, the debit and the credit column seems to be okay right now. And I'm going to take this column with the X, make it quite a bit smaller. And then the balance, well, it doesn't fit in the cell. So to get it to fit to the cell, I can double click between column heading G and H. And when I double click, it resizes it to fit the word balance in there perfectly or the, the largest or widest item within that column, which happens to be the word balance this time. All right, the next thing that we'd like to do here is to go ahead and create a formula. Well, in a check register, uh, the, the balance in the next row is always equal to what you have in the previous balance. Uh, so how much money you had in the account. And then you either add the credits or subtract the debit from that particular balance. Well, to make that formula happen, we always start a formula with an equal sign. And it's equal to the previous balance, which is in cell G2. Now I can just click on cell G2 instead of typing it. And then the debits get subtracted. Well, I'm going to subtract the debit from this row. So it's going to be minus uh, what's in cell D3, which right now there's nothing. But if there's a number there later on, it will subtract it. And then it's going to add the credit from row 3, which is going to be in cell F3. So once again, I click on that. And very important, you don't click on extra cells because if you do, it's just going to change these within your formula. So without clicking on anything extra, I now hit enter. And that formula is in there. Uh, I'm going to take that formula from that cell and I'm going to auto fill it down just one cell because I'm going to create a pattern here in a little bit uh, to make this a little more readable. Uh, before I do that, let's take care of some formatting uh, with the uh, spreadsheet itself. Uh, the date column. Well, with the dates, I'm going to uh, go to the uh, format uh, for numbers. And there's a bunch of, of options here. And I've already got the one I want here, but it probably doesn't show up on your screen. So I'm going to go to more formats and choose more date and time formats. And as you scroll through here, now mine shows up at the top because I recently have used it, but you might have to scroll down a ways. Here's a one digit month and day. So I'm going to click on that and apply. But by doing that, whenever I type a date into this particular column, even though I'm typing in March 25th, when I hit enter, it formats it to a uh, month and day format with the slash in between, just like we, we uh, asked it to do. Uh, other columns that I want to format here, I want to take a look at the three columns here. So I click on column D, the three columns with money. And by holding the control key, I now click on column heading F. And while still holding the control key, I click on column heading G. And now with those, those are going to be money. So up here on my number formatting right here is a number symbol. So I'm going to click on that for to format it as currency. 
And so all those now, whenever I type a number in any of those cells, it automatically formats it with the dollar symbol and also the uh, two, dump, two digits after the decimal place. So it looks like currency. All right, as we continue on here, uh, another thing that I wanna do in this column here, uh, we're gonna use this to check off when transactions have been cleared by our bank. So I'm gonna click on the insert tab. I'm gonna go down to checkbox and it's gonna insert checkboxes there and they work exactly like it says the checkbox. So when a transaction comes through the bank, I can click on here, which is saying that this transaction on this line was cleared by the bank and it's, it's done. Uh, the final thing that we're going to do here is a little bit of uh, coloring with some of our rows. Um, first of all, with this cell, I'm going to use the real light gray three color. Uh, I'm going to use that here throughout. So I'm going to click on row three from A3 all the way over to G3. And I'm going to do the same coloring. So the light gray three, click on that. And I've got all my formats set the way that I want them. So to carry this on throughout a large portion of the document, I'm going to highlight those two rows. And I'm going to use my auto fill handle. And it recognizes the pattern of light gray and then white row. So it's going to continue that pattern as I auto fill it down. And I'm going to stop there. So it went every other one, gray, white, gray, white. Well, you want to make sure you highlight what the pattern is. So, for instance, if I tried to highlight maybe uh, three rows, the pattern of those three rows is white, gray, white. So, if I continue to autofill with that, it would do that exact pattern and not give me the effect that I wanted. So, it's going to go white, gray, white and then white, gray, white again, and then you get white, gray, white. So you get the two whites uh, beside each other, which is not the intent of what we want. So highlight the two, because that's how often it repeats is every two rows, and auto fill down. All right, some little uh, finishing up things here. We need to take a look at our uh, headings. And they're looking pretty good to me right now. Uh, and with the check register, I'm always going to want to see these headings at the top, even as I scroll down further. So right here, that thick gray line, if I click on that and drag it down, this is a bar that does a freeze pane. And it's going to freeze however many rows are above it. Uh, and this would do the same thing. If I click and drag over, it would freeze columns to the left, so you would always see those columns in sight. Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and do that because for a check register, we don't need it, but for the headings, I very much want that because as I scroll down through my document here and keep going down into cells that are lower, those headings stay there, and you can see I'm in row two with the heading, but I'm on row 13. So uh, rows three through 12 are kind of tucked up underneath here where you can't see them. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do while I'm here, go ahead and highlight two rows and auto fill that down yet a little bit further. So uh, the freeze pane is a, is a nice feature and helps so you can see what each column means. And the final little touches I think that we need to do here is to simply name our document this guy is going to be called um, check register. And I'm going to call it check register one for mine because, uh, and actually, why don't we call it check register with your name? So when you're turning these files in, I will know who they're coming from. And then uh, the sheet one tab, uh, I'm going to rename it so it makes sense. And we're going to rename it. And once again, it's just the uh, check register. All right, I think at this point we have uh, talked about everything that we need to with setting up this check register. Uh, go ahead and get that finished up and turn it in on Google Classroom. Have a great day.